welcome to Make or Bake for this week. This week we are baking again. What are we baking? We're going to make stained glass window biscuits. So that's going to be yummy and exciting and we're going to wash our hands now and turn on our oven while you guys get to watch an intro that we recorded earlier. Hi there, so we're making stained glass window biscuits and they're not going to be anything near as big or as intricate as these stained glass windows but they do help us to think about the fact that we often have amazing, stunning buildings in which to pray and to worship God. Now of course we can pray absolutely anywhere and recently our church buildings have been closed but now they are beginning to reopen and although God is with us everywhere, it can be really helpful to come to these special sacred places that have all different things around them to remind us of God's goodness and to help us in our prayers. In the Bible, in the Old Testament, we read about the really amazing ways that they made their temple with gold and special wood and huge curtains. And in our world today, in the present, we have stunning buildings that help us to use our creativity to say God is amazing. This is one of my favourites in this church. I love when we have a church full of sound, of people worshipping and praising in different ways and one of the ways that we do that is through music and singing and quite often we have choirs or we have um, music events in the church and I really love that this one quotes uh, Psalm 98 which encourages us to sing a new song to the Lord. Now I have to tell you in our house we're not very good at singing but we make a joyful noise because we try anyway. <laughs> this is one of my favourite windows in our church. It shows a Bible story from the New Testament. It shows two men fishing and then at the bottom are the words, follow me. And we read in the Bible that Jesus went to the fishermen and he said, follow me, come and be my disciples. And they left their nets and went and followed Jesus and had a massive adventure. Okay. So we've got clean hands and the oven's on. Let's mix some ingredients. So what are we putting in first? So please could you cut our block of butter. We need one fifth, we need 50 grams of it and it's a 250 gram butter. And if you wouldn't mind moving up a tiny bit, at the same time, I can put in some caster sugar. So you don't want brown sugar for this, you want white sugar. And I've got a normal dessert spoon. I'm going to do three heaped teaspoons. So we don't want little ones, we want big ones here. One, two, three. And the reason the cat was able to cut that butter so easily is because it's at room temperature. No, it says I'm really strong. <laughs> you don't want to get it straight out of the fridge. You want it to be a bit softer at room temperature already. And if people have margarine, could they use that? Absolutely, yeah, 50 grams margarine. What am I doing? Cream it together, please. Ooh, Keep cream. going until it looks like a nice smooth mixture. Is it soft? Has our room softened our butter? Ooh. You wouldn't yeah, believe it was like 23 degrees in here, would you? It's hot apart from for the butter. Um, while Kat is creaming it together, I'm going to prepare for our next thing, which is that we need half an egg, which I'm aware is really annoying. So I'm going to uh, crack it into a glass, we're going to mix it together, and then we're just going to put half of it into the bowl. So you said we're creaming this together, but that basically means squishing the butter and the sugar together, It right? does mean that. Squishing. That's a more technical term than creaming. <laughs> I mean, technically I'm whisking, but we're not gonna do it a lot. I just wanted to blend it so we get a bit of yolk and white in Blending it. Blending it, not beating it. I could beat it, that was the word I was looking for. Beat it, there we go. Is that, that sufficiently doing? creamed? It could be more creamy. <laughs> okay, I'll do some more squishing. <laughs> Yeah, that looks better. When it starts to stick to the edge, when you squash it against the edge, that's a good sign. When it starts to look like buttercream, in fact, that's basically what you've got here, except it's not icing sugar. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we need to add next half, half the of egg. the egg. Oh, here we go. There we go. Get 
Yeah. And do I mix that in? Yes, please. And it says we need some vanilla extract as well. What's that? It's just a liquid um, vanilla. It, um, sometimes it's called vanilla essence. It's, it's the same thing. It's the flavour of vanilla which gives the uh, biscuits a really nice taste. And we just need half a teaspoon. So Now this isn't essential. So if you can't get hold of any vanilla essence, don't panic. No. You don't need it for your biscuits. It will still it taste like a nice taste biscuit. Yummy but it's not essential. Well, that is a very good point. Keep going, keep going. Oh, beat that in. And would you like to just uh, show the lovely people watching, it looks a bit like scrambled eggs, but that's actually right, because the next thing we're gonna add is the dry ingredients that bind it all together. So we've got some corn flour. If you're in the States, you would call this corn starch. It's exactly the same thing. And we're gonna get our dessert spoon again. It's, it's, it's done. Good. <laughs> Are you enjoying that? Getting some good exercise. <laughs> we just need two level dessert spoons. So not heaped ones like before, just level ones. So, oh, hang on, that's a bit big. Oh, there's one. Oh. And Number two. two. I'll mix that in. Then mix that in. That'll be grand. Thank you. And then the final ingredient, I think, Final ingredient for this part. Plain Ooh. flour. Yep, just plain flour, no baking powder needed today because we don't need it to turn into cake, we need it to do like biscuits. And instead of using our spoon for this one, we've got a normal, regular mug. So any um, drinking mug that's just a normal size, you don't want one of those giant ones. And we're going to fill it up to about three quarters, so probably to about that purple stripe there. And that's, so I'm just going to use my spoon and so move this that is over. where we're up to beginning to look a bit like cake mix now and then when we add this plain flour in it'll thicken up into a biscuit dough it definitely wouldn't make cake but it does look a bit like cake mix so about my purple stripe if you can see that in there i'm just going to pour it in and kat's going to just mix it in because we beat the other things so the egg got mixed in we just need to mix this that means i should be a bit more gentle it means you don't need to build your rugby strength up doing this bit and then as you uh, mix it, it should become quite dry and crumbly. And then as you mix it a bit more, it will become like uh, a dough mix. And we're gonna, actually, I'll leave that open. We're gonna put a little bit of flour in a minute onto uh, our surface, and then we can knead it together, squish it back, and cut our biscuits out. Great stuff. Simple stuff. So while you're um, mixing it, just going to put some greaseproof paper onto our baking tray so that we're ready when we've done our biscuits to move them straight onto it. Shall I bring this together with my hands a bit now? Does it look like you could squash it if you put your hands in it now? Does it look like you can squash it? Let's get the excess bit off a spoon. We don't want to waste any of the mixture. Is it squashy? Squashy? Squishy? Squishy and squashy. <laughs> can I pass this spoon to you? You can. I'll get rid of that. So we're going to make quite simple shaped biscuits, they're not going to be really complex stained glass window biscuits, but we hope that you have some creative ideas about what shapes and colours you might want to bring together. Would Think you like a little there? bit of flour? Not too much because we don't want to dry it out, so just a tiny bit of flour. I've got a board here, but it doesn't matter what you do on your surface, and then I'll move your bowl. Oh, hang on. <gasps> That's a bit speedy. Got there it. we go. Move the bowl out of the way. And would you like to just show these guys what it looks like now? There you are. Just you're making a nice shape. To show it them. There. <laughs> there we go. That's our biscuit dough. So we're not going to roll it this time. We're just going to squash it with our hands because palm your hands. That's exciting. Because it's nice and soft, isn't it? It's really squishy. That's way more fun than rolling. So we want it to be about, what did we decide it, it is in? About half a centimetre thick. Half a centimetre. I said a quarter of an inch. And apparently that's because old. Esther's honey. really old. She's not really. When you she do sewing, you do everything in inches. So it's it's a different way of doing it, isn't it? So you it? could use a rolling pin for this, but it's actually way more fun like this. And it's not necessary. Your biscuits all level themselves out anyway. So uh, what shapes would you like to use now, Kat? So that's why it looks like flat. I would really like to do a cross. A cross? With a little bit of a window in the middle. So here's your cross. We've got a cross shape cutter there. If you've not got any biscuit cutters, cut any the shape shapes out with like. a knife. Yeah. Not too big, so we want them to be normal biscuit sort of size, otherwise they'll take quite a long time to cook and we don't want that. 
we want to eat them, don't we? So I've done a cross. Okay, so just to show these guys, if it doesn't come out straight away, you can just lift up the bit round the edge and pull it off and then your biscuit will be nice and loose without it breaking. Uh, and then Kat's gonna put it on the board and cut a gap out of the middle, which is where we're gonna put our sweeties later. <gasps> so this is gonna be our bit of stained glass. Would you like me to put it down? Yeah, I, I think can't it'd be easier. <laughs> and meanwhile, I'm going to do a bigger biscuit. I know I said we couldn't have them too big, but we can have them a bit big with our round cutter. And because we're thinking a little bit about church and how exciting that is, I really like the music that we have in churches. So I'm going to do a music shaped hole in the middle of our biscuit. Here we go. Let's see if we can lift this up without it breaking here. All oh, the bigger ones are flimsier. Goodness. I made life harder for myself here. Oh, I broke the biscuit. Hang on. The joy of biscuits is that you can pick up the dough Squish it back together. Nobody will know. I mean, apart from you. So that's it's been a little bit stick. fiddly, but can I just lift this up again? You can. I've just put a pile of flour on there ready to. You can see that I've now out. got a cross shaped biscuit with a cross shaped oh, gap that's in the really middle sweet. that's going to become. Do you want to use colour? your knife and move it over because that was a bit so. easier than. Lift it up like that. I'm trying not to get flour all over my black top. I always wear black when we do flour. So we're going to make some more shapes really fast now and then we'll show them to you when they're all spread out on the baking board. So we've cut out all our different shapes and we can just carefully show you there. The really important thing is that they've all got a reasonably small hole in the middle. This one was just our leftover dough. So you can <laughs> all have cooking. one without a hole in the middle. <laughs> And Esther's going to put those in the oven and they're going to go in for 12 minutes and then we're going to check on them and see how they're doing. So we'll see you in 12 minutes. Okay, so we're nearly ready to get our biscuits out. One minute to go. One minute, but we just need to prepare the next part. The gaps in our biscuits, we're going to fill with some jelly, which sounds a bit strange but you'll see it's quite magical how the jelly fills the space. In order to do that, you need to take some ready, um, a packet of jelly and not make it up with the water, but we're just gonna cut it into little tiny pieces. So I'm going to use a pair of scissors. Feel free to use some, a knife to do this, <laughs> um, but. You might have seen these kind of stained glass window biscuits made with squashed up, uh, smashed up boiled sweets. And they look amazing and they taste good, but they can be a bit tough on your teeth. They're no so good the for ones, my teeth. Um, the ones we're making are more like dummy dodgers. Oh, so yeah. they're going to be like really squidgy. Other brands middle. are available. <laughs> so they're a bit easier on your teeth and they still look great and they still taste great, I think. Mm -hmm. If you do use boiled sweets, you have to put them in before you put them in the oven. Yeah. Speaking of the oven, we don't need to do that. So just to show you, I've cut up these pieces into tiny little squares. So there's about, I don't know, eight squares per cube. Oh, here they come. Oh, they look good. So Do you want me to move out the way and you can show these guys? Your biscuits will still be quite pale when they come out because they've been baked on a really low heat. But you just need to um, check. Ooh, that one's like <gasps> dancing all away. over. That the bottom is ever so slightly browner, which you can't really see on the camera. But you saw what? the way that that turned over. It should be just a it little bit crisp. Solid. Otherwise, it'll all fall apart. So I'm making a little pile uh, speedily here of jam because we want the tray Not to jam. be... Oh, jam. <laughs> <laughs> of jelly to make our jam because we want the tray to still be hot. So Kat, if you would like to very carefully pick up some of these and then... No, that's not the careful bit. Pick up some of these and then very carefully <laughs> put so, them in the gap without touching the tray because the tray is really, really hot. Our oven still thinks we're trying to bake, hot. doesn't it? And so you yeah, will see... be really careful. Don't touch the tray at all. And you want to make sure your jelly goes in the gaps in your biscuits rather than on top of your biscuit because otherwise when it melts... It will just spread all over your biscuit. And the important thing is, we're going to put these in and then we're not going to touch the biscuits. So we're going to let it just cool on the tray. So wherever you've put your tray, make sure it's in a place where it could stay for a little bit while it cools down. Oh, that was beginning already, look. Can you see? Yeah, starting to melt. Hopefully, as soon as you start putting them on, you'll see that once you've moved on to the second or third one, you'll notice 
that it will start to melt. That looks for me. Yeah, once they've started melting, you can kind of fit more in more easily. And of course, the important thing is that you also don't need to use red jelly. We've chosen the strawberry one because that's what we like, but you could choose any colour. And you could choose more than one colour and make different stained glass effects by putting different colours in together. Lovely. The, uh, the smaller the, um, the areas, the, hard the more it difficult it is. <laughs> So if I get the oven gloves on, shall we move this over to the camera because, can you point Kat to the ones that are more, I can't tip it up very much, but the, you can see this one nearest me. you are, me. I'm just going to do this slightly. Oh, look at that. So the one with the uh, musical note, which is nearest me, and you can see it's gone flat because it started to melt and that circle one, next one down from it, look, completely flat. Whereas the others, you can still see the jelly piled up on top. They're melting away and we're just going to leave them be. So we'll come back and we'll have a look at how they're doing in a little while. What do you think, maybe? Well, we're going to leave them to cool now, so in half an hour maybe? We'll come back in half an hour and then our finished biscuits should be ready for eating. Hiya! So, when your biscuits are completely cool and they need to be completely cool, like I can hold the tray without a, anything, you will then be able to lift them off and you can hold them up to the light and they'll shine through like stained glass windows. When you do it, you'll realise that you have to peel it off because the jelly may be on the back, but from the front, they're perfect. So and nobody if, will know. If it's still really sticky, leave it to cool for a bit longer. Oh yeah, if you start lifting up and it looks stretchy, just put it back down and walk away. Ooh. Perfect. Ooh. Oh, I should put it down, upside down. <laughs> so I'll we'll just lift all those off. Ooh. Oh, that one doesn't need any pulling off. Look, it hasn't got any jelly. Thank God. Mm. Can we do it really close so you can see how cool the stretching is? Look at <laughs> this. Oh, that one wasn't even that stretchy. <laughs> I think we should eat these two. You're going to eat the cross? I think. I think we're going to eat this cross. We need our grace dice. Mm -mm. So I'm going to roll this and then I'm going to pray and then we're going to eat our biscuits. So let's pray. Thank you God for all the food you provide. Help us to share it more equally so no one goes hungry. Amen. Amen. Okay. Here is your cross. Thank you. And before you do that, I just need to show you how great this is. Can you see the light shining through it? But look at this. Ooh. <laughs> Stretchy stained glass window biscuits. Because you'll stretch. It's only got a little hole. Oh, a little bit. A little bit of the stretch. <laughs> how cool is that? It makes them really hard to eat them. Mm. They're all mm. stretchy. Mm. Mm. Like strawberry laces. Do no stone.